What is up, everybody? Aiden the Movie Guy is back here with a, another tier list. And today, I just saw Black Panther Wakanda Forever. I'm not going to do a review on it because I don't want to give away where it's going to land on this tier list. But we're, this tier list will, all, will be my MCU tier list and my little review of Black Panther Wakanda Forever. So, without further ado, here are the tiers. So, we have awesome, great, good, okay, meh, and bad. Now, I just want to say, there's not going to be a lot on that bad tier. Most of them will be on the top three tiers because I'm a big MCU fan. I love the MCU. I've loved it ever since um, I saw, ever since the big Avengers Age of Ultron, I've been into the MCU, and um, yeah, let's get down to this. There's 30 movies to rank. I'm not going to go in depth about each and every one of them, because that will take forever, but I will get my short thoughts on them. So first off, we've got Iron Man. Iron Man, the one that started it all, still is one of the best. It has to go on that awesome tier. I love Iron Man. This was one of my favorite movies of 2008. What a start to this franchise. If this movie sucked, we wouldn't have this we wouldn't have this big cinematic universe and I loved the first Iron Man. Yes, Robert Downey Jr, you can say what you want about his past. But with this role, he really turned his life around. I loved Iron Man. I love the growth he goes through. I like how he's ready to make these sacrifices because he did say in the movie, I shouldn't be alive unless it was for a reason. And this movie's great. Everyone loves this film. I think it's still one of the best MCU films. 14 years later, and it's still absolutely one of the best. Right, then we got a month later, we got The Incredible Hulk. Which, The, the Incredible Hulk is not a bad movie. It's not bad. Like I know some people will have this one in the bad section. I'm going to go meh for The Incredible Hulk. I think this movie is just so forgettable. The final battle is great, though. I like the final battle. Edward Norton is a decent Hulk, but this is... If, you, if I'm going to marathon the entire MCU, all these movies, I occasionally would skip The Incredible Hulk. And... For good reason. It's just not one of my favorites. It's just, it's bottom tier MCU. I was just, it's, it's just meh. It's not bad. Like this could have easily been on the bad tier. If I was really hard, I would have put it on the bad tier. But I'm going meh tier. At least everyone Norton's trying though. And this is the black sheep of the MCU because everyone Norton didn't doesn't play the Hulk anymore. It's Mark Ruffalo. And I do prefer Mark Ruffalo as the Hulk, but unpopular opinion, I prefer Edward Norton as Bruce Banner. And I thought we could have seen him in Multiverse of Madness, but no. So for me, The Incredible Hulk is just a very just meh film. Now we got Iron Man 2. Everyone, a lot of people hate Iron Man 2 and would have it here or here. I think Iron Man 2 is okay. I think it's okay. Again, John Favreau did need a lot more time to write the script for this movie. I understand they wanted to get out just for the Avengers. I still think there's a lot to enjoy here. I don't think it's a great movie. I don't think it's a good movie. I think it's okay. It has its good moments, but Robert De Tony Stark was so unlikable in this movie. He was drunk. He just, I don't know. I hate Whiplash as a villain. I don't like Whiplash. Justin Hammer, he's not really that interesting. Iron Man 2 had a lot of potential to be just as good, as good as that first film. Wasted it a bit, but it is not a bad movie. It's a very okay movie. I think it's a little overhated. Still not great, though. But And another thing that's real about this, because Terrence Howard played Rhodey in the first Iron Man, but then he got recasted, and now Don Cheadle has been playing War Rhodey from Iron Man 2 to now. 
And honestly, as much as I like Don Cheadle in the role, I prefer Terrence Howard. I don't know. I don't know why. I've always had that thing for Terrence Howard. I've always preferred him as Rhodey, but I will. But Iron Man 2 is not a terrible film. It's a decent movie, but it could have been a lot better. Then we have Thor. I'm going to be honest here. I wasn't the biggest fan of Thor's early films. But I did enjoy this movie. So I'm going to put the first Thor on the good tier. I think the first Thor is a solid film. It's not amazing or anything. The moments on Asgard are great. And I mean great. Like If this was just taking place on Asgard, this would have been on that great tier. And it's the moments on Earth that just anger me. Kat Dennings is Darcy. Oh, she is so freaking annoying. I do not like Darcy in this movie. And without a doubt, she is one of the worst characters in the MCU. Probably the most annoying character. But apart from the moments on Earth, the movie's still pretty good. I think it's decent enough. It's enjoyable. There are a lot of flaws with it. But I still have fun with it. I can still have fun with Thor. But it's not great. And we got Captain America the First Avenger. Now, when I was first getting into the MCU, I honestly was not a fan of the first Avenger. I was like, eh, this movie would have been... Like, if you'd asked me when I first was getting into this universe, the MCU, I was like, Captain America the first Avenger is okay. I think this movie is actually good. I think it's a good movie. I did have it on the great tier for quite a while, but after revisiting it, going into rewatching all these films, it did drop a bit, but... I still thoroughly enjoy this movie. I love the World War II setting. I love Chris Evans as Captain America. And I do really like Red Skull as a villain. Sure, there are a few little nitpicks here and there. The first hour is amazing. If it was just the first hour, this would be in the top. In the top tier. But the second half is good. It's not as great as that first hour. If it was that just that first hour alone, it would be on the great tier. But I still enjoyed the movie enough. So I'm going to keep it on the good tier. And then we have The Avengers. The, the movie that these first five films were all leading up to, I think The Avengers is a great movie. A little bit overhyped. It does lose a bit of its steam after watching it several times, but... I don't know. I still really enjoy the movie. I still think the movie is very is a great film. I love the banter with all these characters, and Loki is a great villain. I loved it when Loki was a villain. Now they've turned him into a hero. I'm not really keen on that, but this movie was great. It was a killing in the box office, and for good reason because it was really great, and I did really like it. All right, now we're into phase two. I'm just going to see it right off the bat. From Iron Man 3 and after, I've seen most of these, all these movies in the cinema, exception of two of them. And we'll talk about them when we get there. So first off is Iron Man 3. Now I have a soft spot for Iron Man 3. I know some people don't like Iron Man 3. Um, I get it. I have a bit of a soft spot for it. I think it is... A very enjoyable film. I think it is a really, really enjoyable film. It has moments of greatness, but it has some moments of weakness in it. It shows its weaknesses. If you can forgive the Mandarin twist, like after seeing Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, it made me appreciate Iron Man 3 a lot more. I really like Iron Man 3. As a Shane Black movie, it's one of his best. But as an MCU movie, I'm going to call it good. I know some of you were thinking, oh, you're going to put this on the great tier, Aiden? I'm not. Still a good film. Still a really good movie. But I just wanted more action in there. Because when I first saw it in theaters, I loved it. And I was like, Iron Man 3 is awesome. This is my favorite movie of all time. Again, I was eight years old and I just saw an action movie on the big screen. I was like, that was great. I loved that. Over time, it's still a good movie. It just wasn't as great as it once was. When I, well, when I first saw it. But other than that, I still really enjoy it. Alright, now we got Thor The Dark World. 
one of the two MCU films I skipped in theaters, and for good reason, because this movie is going on that bad tier. It's not the worst comic book film ever made, but it it's not very good. It's not very interesting. I understand it is an important film in the MCU because after Endgame, there was callbacks to Thor: The Dark World, and I was and just it bores me. This movie is so boring, boring. Like I don't hate the movie, but it is freaking boring. There's only like one MCU film that I hate. Like I mean, hate. I don't hate Thor: The Dark World. I just don't like it. So it's on the bad tier. At least Loki was in the movie, and he made the movie bearable. But other than that, this movie, is, it's just not very good. Now we got, let's talk about some great film. Let's talk about a great movie. Captain America, The Winter Soldier. Gonna go on that awesome tier. I absolutely love the first Avenger. It's, I'm, bleh, sorry, I meant The Winter Soldier. Captain America, The Winter Soldier. When I saw this movie in theaters, I was blown away by how much I fucking loved it. Everyone says this is, a lot of people say this is their favorite film in the MCU, and for good reason, because it is a fucking great movie. If you, if you think this movie's overrated, that's fine. Like, I know Sean Chandler says this movie's overrated, but he still loves it. I love this movie, and it, it's just amazing. I love everything, anything the Russo brothers do in the MCU is guaranteed to be top tier. And now we got Guardians of the Galaxy. The biggest gamble in the MCU because no one knew who these characters were. Guardians of the Galaxy, for me, is on the awesome tier. This is the my most rewatched film in the MCU is Guardians of the Galaxy. I adore, adore, adore this movie. This is honestly in my top 30 favorite films of all time. I get it's not one of the best made films ever. But it's one I cherish. I love this movie. I saw it in theaters. I saw it three times in the cinema and I loved it. I was only nine years old at the time. So a nine-year-old kid going to see Guardians of the Galaxy on repeat. I fucking love this movie. I love Star-Lord. I love Gamora. I love Drax. I love Rocket. And you can't forget Groot. I am Groot. Cannot wait to see Volume 3 next year, man. I'm going to be crying next year with Volume 3 because Volume 3 is going to be amazing. I hope it's amazing. And this movie, the move, this movie has a great soundtrack as well. One of the best, not one of the best soundtracks ever. It's one I love. And Guardians of the Galaxy is a top tier MCU movie. Then we have Avengers Age of Ultron. Now, when I first saw this movie, I was quite underwhelmed because I thought it could have been as great as the first Avengers movie and honestly it was quite disappointing it's still a good movie at best it's still a good movie but it could have been so much better that first teaser trailer was amazing and I thought Ultron was going to be a dark version of Tony Stark I loved I loved Ultron as a villain again there was a few issues here and there. And before Multiverse of Madness, this was the most confusing film in the MCU. Honestly, I think I thought this was the most confusing until I saw Multiverse of Madness. But I still really, really enjoyed Age of Ultron. I think it's a good movie. Just could have been so much better. Then we have Ant-Man. Ant-Man, for me, is on the good tier. For one of the smaller scale MCU films, it's such a fun ride. Pun intended, by the way. And um, <clears throat> yeah, I love Paul Rudd in the role of Evangeline Lilly. I love Michael Douglas. Uh, Corey Stahl's villain I have my issues with. And this movie overall is a really, really good time. It's not swinging for the fences. It's trying to be a fun time. And I think it succeeds in that most part. And I think it's very funny as well. And it actually is quite funny. If you want to have a laugh with him with an MCU movie, you can have a laugh with them, man. This is really funny. 
Now we're on to phase three, easily my favorite phase of the bunch. So we'll start with Captain America Civil War, straight up to the top. <clears throat> this was the movie that set up both Infinity War and Endgame. And because of how this movie ended with all our heroes splitting up, then us one. Because if you look back, if when you watch Infinity War and Endgame, you will then realize that Steve was right all along. But this, even still to this day, people are still debating Team Cap or Team Iron Man. I'm Team. I was. I was always changing. I couldn't choose whose team I was on. I loved this movie, and it's one of the best films in the MCU for good reason. All right, now we got Doctor Strange. Now, this is my most one of my most unpopular opinions on Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange for me is the most overrated movie in the MCU. The most overrated. But I still think it's a good movie. It is a good movie. It's just not one that I want to watch again and again. <laughs> The visual effects are stunning. The visual effects are great. Benedict Cumberbatch is great in the role. But if you ask me, Aiden, would you really want to rewatch Doctor Strange on loop? Not really. I still enjoy the movie at, not at best. And it's still a good time, but it's not top. I see this in people's top five MCU or top 10 or even top 15. I'm like, I don't have it that high, but it is a good movie. It is a good movie, but I do I can acknowledge that it is very flawed. All right, now we got Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. This one, every, a lot of people will have here or here. Me, I'm gonna go great here for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. I don't get the hate for this movie at all. This is the most underrated film in the MCU. I love Guardians Volume 2. I love... I have my issues with it. It's not perfect. I do... I don't kind of like... I kind of don't like that they all split up. Like, one half, you've got Star-Lord, Gamora, and Drax, and Mantis, and Ego, and one half. And on the other half, you've got Rocket, Baby Groot, Nebula, and, like, Kraglin, and Yondu. I kind of like that, and I... Ego is a great villain. Kurt Russell did a great job playing the role of Ego. And the soundtrack here is not as good as the first, but I do quite like it. And Baby Groot is the cutest ever. And I, I did shed a few tears at the end. And man, I'm Mary Poppins, y'all! Uh, don't even get me stories. I'm actually starting to cry, but ah uh, well. Guardians Volume 2, for me, is on the great tier because I love it. And I cannot wait for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Man, James Gunn, you have to succeed with this because you made two great MCU films. You made a great DCEU film. Can't wait to see what you do next. Spider-Man Homecoming is next, and this is another one that's going to go on the great tier. Honestly, this is one of the most rewatchable films in the MCU. I love Spider-Man Homecoming quite a bit. For a Spider-Man movie, it's just so good. Tom Holland's first Spider-Man movie. I think he's a great Spider-Man. He's no Tobey Maguire, but he is fantastic. And this movie, he's just a kid trying to deal with high school. He's just trying to deal with high school, and he's trying to deal with um, you know the struggles of being a teenager. And I and I really like that because I can quite relate to that because I was a high school student and I was high school. And honestly, I really, really enjoyed Spider-Man Homecoming. The Vulture is a top-tier MCU villain. And that twist as well, when Peter knocks on the door and he opens it and it turns out he's Liz's dad, my jaw dropped. I was like, wow, I did not see that coming. But other than that, this movie's great. I have my issues with it. It's not perfect, but it's a great film. And this is another hot streak from the MCU. We have Thor Ragnarok, and that's actually going to go on the awesome tier. I love Thor Ragnarok. 
Like, look at that jump from good to bad to awesome. I did not expect Thor Ragnarok to be as good as it was because when I found out they were making a Thor 3, I was like, really? A third Thor movie? I was just like, this movie is probably going to suck. But no, this movie blew me away. I love Thor Ragnarok. If you, if you don't like this movie, that's fine. That is fine. I love it. I love Thor in this movie. I love what Taika Waititi done with this movie. I'm glad he didn't write the script because we'll be talking about that when we come to Love and Thunder. But Thor, Thor Ragnarok was just a blast. It's funny as well. It's probably the funniest film in the MCU because it's it's just so funny. And the Emigrant song in this movie is fucking great. Every time I hear that song in this movie, Every time I watch that final battle, I'm like, yes! But let's move on. Let's move on to Black Panther. Now, before this rewatch, Black Panther would have been like here. As I was like, it's a good film, but it is quite overrated. I rewatched this during the rewatch, and then last night I rewatched it going into Wakanda Forever. And Black Panther for me is a great film. Hearing about the passing of Chadwick, I I was heartbroken because this guy had so much potential in the MCU and Wakanda Forever was the send-off that we needed and I will be talking about it when we get there. But for me, Black Panther is on the great tier. It was a game-changer for the MCU because, let's be real, we haven't had a black fe- a black lead in the MCU until Black Panther. And Black Panther was fucking great. I love Black Panther. Rest in peace, Chadwick Boseman. Michael B. Jordan as Eric Killmonger was fucking great. And overall, this movie is it's a great MCU film. If you have if you say it's overrated, go back and rewatch it, and then you will appreciate it more. Go see Wakanda Forever, because that will make you appreciate it more as well. And now we got Avengers in Infinity War. Infinity War, for me, is straight up to the top. This, this was what all these films before were leading up to. This and Endgame. And Infinity War delivered. I saw this movie five times in the cinema and loved it. I've I've watched it over a hundred times now. It's, it's just fucking great. The more times I rewatch it, the more I love it. And who knows? This is in comp- also in competition for my favorite MCU film. You'll find out at the end if this is my favorite or not. But other than that, Infinity War is a fucking masterpiece. And that ending, the holy fucking shit. Well, we all knew what was going to happen, but we were all like, how is it going to happen? Endgame answers that. But we'll talk about Endgame when we get there, because we've only got two more movies until Endgame. Okay. Now we've got Ant-Man and the Wasp. Coming off Infinity War, everyone wanted some lighthearted fun with him and the Wasp. I do think this movie is just okay. Because coming off the the big Infinity War, this movie was just trying to be a fun time. It was for and it was it was just fine. I didn't hate the movie, but I didn't love it. It's an okay MCU film. I did like elements of it, but one of my main issues is with with this is like another one of my main issues with Thor Love and Thunder. It was trying too hard to be funny. At least Airman of the Wasp had some funny moments. It had funny moments. But it wasn't funny as a whole. It had its nice moments here and there. And I do like Paul Rudd. He's great. The villain though, not very interesting. And overall the movie was just, it's fine. It's a fine movie. And now we got Captain Marvel. Probably the most controversial film in the MCU because the statement Brie Larson made before this movie, she got a lot of hate for it. And good reason. But I don't hate this movie. I don't hate Brie Larson as an actress. And I don't hate her as a person. Oh, I don't like her as a person. But I do like her as an actress. And this movie for me is meh. I think this movie is just straight up meh. 
has his good moments. I do like seeing a young Nick Fury, but Carol Danvers is so unlikable in this movie. She just acts like she's just she knows everything. And to me, this movie, it just falls flat. It's not funny. It's not very interesting. I like Goose the Cat, and I like seeing a young Nick Fury, but other than that, nah, not really. I'm not really excited for Captain Marvel 2, but I will be checking it out next year, but I'm not excited for it. All right, now we got the big one of the bunch, Avengers Endgame. No doubt in my mind, it's going on the awesome tier. Avengers Endgame. This, in my opinion, should have been the last MCU film. Like, honestly, this should have been the last. But what we got off, but I know why they kept going. For money. And Endgame for me was this. A lot of people were done after Endgame. I can't blame them. I still kept going with these other ones. But if you ended with Endgame, I get it. I totally get it. Totally get it. Endgame for me was the, the conclusion that I asked for. Again, I know there are flaws with it. I don't see any. And ending off Phase 3, Spider-Man Far From Home. Gonna go on the good tier. It's a good movie. It's not fantastic. Like, when I first saw it, I thought this movie, oh, this movie is so good. It's amazing. I love Far From Home. On rewatch, though, it did drop. But, on, but after seeing No Way Home, I was like, this is still a very good film, but it's not as great as it was. Again, there are heavy flaws with it. Like, why would Tony Stark, after he died, why would he leave his Edith glasses to a high schooler who's been dead for five years? That, that confused me a bit, but I still really like it. I still think this movie's very good. It's not top tier MCU, but it is a it's a good it's an enjoyable enough watch. Alright, now we got phase four. I'm gonna be honest here, phase four is easily the weakest phase of the MCU because none of these films will well a few only th two or three of these films are gonna be on those on those top two tiers. The rest of them will probably either be like down here. So we'll start off with Black Widow. I'm going to go to the old hate tier for Black Widow. It's not a terrible film. It's certainly not a bad movie. I think there's good moments in here. If this movie came out um, five years, like if this movie came out during Civil War and Doctor Strange, I think this would have been the one of the biggest disappointments in the MCU. I kind of knew, well, I hated what they did with Taskmaster. I loved seeing Florence Pugh as Yelena in here. I think this was just to introduce her and Red Guardian, played by David Harbour. And I do like the family dynamic in this movie. I think this movie is, it had some enjoyable stuff, but it's not one that I would rewatch again. Shang-Chi and the Legends of the Ten Rings. This movie was such a surprise. And I'm putting that on the greats here. I really like Shang-Chi. I know there are people that are like, uh, oh, this it's fine. I know Jay Vares was not a fan of it. I respect your opinion, Jay. If you are watching this, I do respect your opinion. But I loved this movie. I loved it. I loved the action. I loved the martial arts stuff. I love martial arts movies. If you love Kung Fu Panda, you're gonna love this movie. This will probably be one of your favorite. If you Kung Fu Panda is one of your favorite Dreamworks films, this will probably be one of your favorite MCU films. Okay. And I love the villain in here. And the post and seeing Trevor Slattery in this movie, played by um, Sir Ben Kingsley again, I thought that was just a nice thing. And I liked seeing Wong in here. And overall, this movie was such a fun time from start to finish. And I think it's a great film. Okay. So we're going from a great movie to Eternals. Eternals, bad. I hate Eternals. Eternals is the only film on this list that I flat out hate. I hated what Chloe Zhao done with Eternals. I didn't find this movie to be all that enjoyable. I found it boring. I found it to be just a complete drag. We don't know anything about 
any of these characters will work from Icarus to Gilgamesh to Sprite to I can't, I can't even remember any of the other Eternals names. And this movie was so boring. Literally, I I had a free period last two on a Monday of school, so I went to go see this movie, and I was bored out my fucking mind with it. I hated Eternals. I gave it a pass when I first saw it. I was like, this movie's okay. But I've seen, and I rewatched it, didn't like it, and then I watched it a third time and just hated it. And for me, this is easily the worst film in the MCU. Then we have No Way Home. After Eternals, I thought I was going to be done with the MCU. I was really nervous about No Way Home. No Way Home lived up to the hype and more, and it's straight up to the top. This is peak Spider-Man. This, Spider-Man 2 and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse are peak Spider-Man. Tom Holland is the best. This is the best we've ever seen him as Spider-Man. And spoilers, they brought back Toby and Andrew in this movie. And Andrew is better than ever. And Toby is just as good in the Raimi trilogy as he is here. I think he's still better in the Raimi trilogy. But I think Andrew Garfield is way better here than his two movies. And I love seeing all the Spider-Man villains from the Raimi trilogy. Like you got Green Goblin, Norman Osborn, Dr. Octavius. I loved seeing the Sandman. I loved seeing... I like seeing the Lizard, and you made Electro a great villain. Because the Amazing Spider-Man 2 was like, nah. I was not... I don't hate the Amazing Spider-Man 2 like a lot of people do. I think it's fine, but it's just not very good. This made me appreciate it a lot more. This made me appreciate every Spider-Man movie more and more. And for me, it deserves a spot in that awesome tier. Okay, now we got to this year's films. We'll start off with Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Now, I did say I found this movie to be quite disappointing. I still stand by that. I still stand by that. But I still had some fun with it. So I'm going to go good tier for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. The thing is, when it comes to Doctor Strange, I prefer him as a side character rather than a main character. I still enjoy his movies, though, but they're not my favorite films in the MCU. And this one, I thought, would have been my, one of my favorites in the MCU. I was like, going into this, I was like, this is going to be on the awesome tier or the great tier. When I first saw it, I was like, that was so underwhelming. I thought it was okay at first, but then I rewatched it going into... Wakanda for when I done my MCU rewatch, I enjoyed it a little bit more, so I'm gonna put it on the good tier. All right, now we got Thor: Love and Thunder. Oh boy! When I first saw this, I thought it was great and so much fun. But I've seen this movie four times now, and every time I like it less and less. I just when I first saw, it, I was like, "That's awesome," and I was like, "It's still great, but not as good as it was." Then I was like. It's a good film. No, I think it's an okay film. Honestly, this could have easily been on one of these two, on these bottom two tiers, but I'm going to go okay tier for Thor Love and Thunder. Had its good moments. It had its good moments, but they all ended up with a fucking joke. Christian Bale is great in this movie. This movie could have been great because Christian Bale was in this movie and he played Gore the God Butcher brilliantly. Natalie Portman was back. She was great. Uh, I'm not a fan of Valkyrie as a character. And you wasted the Guardians of the Galaxy in this movie. I understand that they were meant, it was meant to tie into Volume 3, but I thought we could have got more of the Fleming Guardians in this movie. I wanted this, the reason, the main reason why I was so excited to see this was because we were seeing the Guardians. But, no, nah, they just fucked up. And I understand it's leading into Volume 3, but I wanted more of the Guardians. And for me, this movie is just okay. It could have been on the meh or the bad tier, but I'm going to go okay tier. And now we have Black Panther Wakanda Forever, the film that I'm finally going to be able to talk about. I finally saw it today, and Black Panther Wakanda Forever is a great movie. This saved the MCU 
It saved the MCU, and I'm so glad it did because the MCU was going downhill because after Thor Love and Thunder, I was like, oh, God, no. But Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, saved it. And it did show that Phase 4 had a lot of hope. I had a lot of hope for Phase 4. Again, some of them disappointed. Some of them surprised me. And Black Panther, Wakanda Forever absolutely surprised me. I loved it. Shuri is an, among my top. She is in my top 10 fair MCU characters after this movie. I will not spoil it, but she was great in here. I loved seeing Okoye. I loved Mbaku. I loved how this was a tribute to Chadwick Boseman. Rest in peace, Chadwick. You are an absolute legend. If Chadwick was still alive, he would be the leader of the Avengers. And that's that's a fact. And every time I think, and when I was, and I shed a few tears watching this movie. I'm not going to lie. And this movie is very emotional. It's the most emotional film in the MCU. And it's a great one. It's, I need to see it a second time. So I'm going to go and see it a second time next weekend because this weekend I'm busy. But, oh yeah. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. It was a great movie. Now it's time to rank them. So at the bottom, we have, we're have we going to keep Eternals, then Thor the Dark World. Then we'll keep, then these bottom four are fine where they are. Thor, Eternals, Thor the Dark World, Captain Marvel, the Incredible Hulk. Then I'm going to put Iron Man 2 at the bottom of OK, then Thor Love and Thunder, then Black Widow, and then Ant-Man and the Wasp. Then I'm going to put Thor. Avengers Age of Ultron, Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. Yes, I prefer Multiverse of Madness over uh, the first one. Far From Home, Captain America First Avenger, Iron Man 3, and Ant-Man. Yeah, that's for the good tier. Then for the great tier, I'm going to put Homecoming, Shang-Chi, The Avengers, Wakanda Forever, Guardians Volume 2, and then Black Panther. And actually, you know what? I'm actually going to put Thor Ragnarok down to the great down to the great tier. Yeah, Thor Ragnarok would be number eight. Then number seven, uh, I'm going to go Winter Soldier. Then Iron Man. No Way Home. Civil War. Guardians of the Galaxy. Infinity War. Endgame. So that is my ranking of the MCU movies tier list style. As you can see, Endgame's the best, Eternals is the worst. Cannot wait to see what Phase 5 has to offer us. And um, let me know what your ranking is down below. Please comment, please like and subscribe, and um, stay tuned for some more MCU content. And um, remember, keep talking movies too much. I'll see you all in the next video.